before we start the show, I'm taking you to Salinas Valley near a little town called Gonzales, okay? And I want to introduce you to a very small, delicate, beautiful little jewel of a vineyard called Pavona. Pavona. <laughs> and you know what? You know what Pavona means? Pavona is a female peacock or peahen okay. in Italian. Boo! Now, <laughs> and this is Richard Canacaris, okay? Richard. Good to meet you, John. Thank you very much. Um, Richard has a very, very small winery, and it's what we call out here in the West a, a boutique winery. That's correct. And, but you've been in the business quite a while. I've been in the business my whole professional life. Started working at wineries when I was 21 and uh, built sort of had a career in the industry and became a general manager of a winery and then ultimately started Pavona seven years ago. Wow. And you produce? We produce around 5,000 cases of, um, of uh, premium varietal wines, mostly from Monterey County grapes each year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we expect to grow a couple thousand cases every year. We're trying to really grow our brand mm -hmm. and become one of the uh, preeminent uh, Monterey County and Central Coast wineries. Very good. And let me tell you, your wines are very good. Oh, we, thank, we've thank you. We've tasted them and, you know, we serve them in our restaurant. We're very proud to have them with us. Now, Monterey is becoming very famous for... What grapes? Several varieties. Uh, Chardonnay, number one, I think uh, about 75% of the uh, 45,000 acres in Monterey County is planted to Chardonnay. But in addition to that, Syrah is going to be a major player in Monterey and Pinot Noir. And we do, um, we do each of those varieties. Uh, actually, the Chardonnay, we don't do a straight Chardonnay because Pavona wants to be a little bit different from everybody else. So we do a wine called Chardonnay Blanc. It's the first one in the world. It's a combination uh, to be marketed as such. It's a combination of Chardonnay and Pinot Blanc, two of the best varieties in Monterey County. Wow. And now, um, we're going to taste this one. Yes. Now, tell me, um, um, Paul McCartney has some interest in this wine, I understand. Yes, uh, there's one a cheer. One of the Beatles. Yes. Uh, I'm a huge Paul McCartney and Beatle fan, so I um, was real fortunate to uh, come in contact with uh, some of McCartney's associates, and they're producing a wine for a charity which is endorsed um, and co-founded by Paul McCartney called the Garland Appeal. All the money for the charity goes to uh, breast cancer research uh, because uh, uh, Paul's uh, first wife, Linda, as you know, passed away from breast mm -hmm. cancer. And so it's a worthwhile project, and we're real excited because they approached apparently dozens and dozens of wineries uh, in California, and they chose Pavona wow. to make their wine. And um, wow, that's fabulous. Yeah, we're real excited yeah. about it. One of the wines which we're making for them is the Chardonnay Blanc, mm -hmm. uh, this particular wine, which um, this vintage, which is our 2000, is a combination of uh, 85% Chardonnay and 15% Pinot Blanc. And it's 100% barrel fermented in French oak. And um, so you get that additional round, rounded complexity that you get from barrel fermentation. And uh, it's got a lot of the real Monterey character, a lot of tropical fruit, a um, certain amount of pineapple, uh, a little bit of grapefruit. Wow, really? And um, a fairly you know light to medium bodied style wine, a fully dry, um, and like I said, Pavona is, tries to do things differently. So you can see our packaging's a little more avant-garde, a little brighter, more colorful than a lot of other wineries. The bottle shapes are all different for each variety. Um, every, every wine has different on the labels. They're different bright colors, even though we retain the same design, the Pavona design, and we have the peacock on every, every, every bottle. But we try not to be like everybody else, so we don't do a Cabernet and we don't do a Merlot. And we, this is the first time we've actually made wine from Chardonnay, but we, we would promise from day one that we wouldn't do a straight out Chardonnay because so many other people are doing it. So we did something a little bit different. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this little segment and introducing you to Bavona Wines and to Richard. And uh, I tell you, very, very, very impressive. Thank really. you so much. Thank do, you, John. You're gonna do real well with this, folks. Thank you, John. Okay. Hi, welcome to Monterey's Cooking. I'm John Pisto. Today, I thought I would do you know, first of all, let me tell you about my neighborhood where I grew up. You know, back in the f 50s, 40s and 50s, the area of Monterey that I grew up was all Italian people, okay? So, you know, you can always tell what people were cooking because you could actually smell. <laughs> and it would always start with garlic and parsley. 
garlic, parsley, and onion. And you know, these you can, every Sunday we'd smell the, 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 the pasta sauce being made. You know, if they're using the, um, the, uh, sausage in it or meat or, I mean, you could actually smell it, okay? Um, also, some of the staples, and this came from my grandmother, actually, and passed on to my mom, because, you know, growing up during the Depression, and they had to make food really stretch. So, you know, meat, I, I remember my mom telling me, you know, meat was kind of hard to come by. And so they would eat stuff with a lot of protein in it and legumes and yeah, you know things that gave them a balanced diet. So I remember my mom making this for us and I loved it. And you know, I've got, geez, I bet you maybe 30 or 40 of these recipes. And they're all delicious. And you know, I'm gonna embellish them a little bit. But um, the one I'm gonna do today is called pasta con piselli, right? Pasta with peas. And you know, I, I like using the frozen peas because number one, they're available all year round. Number two, they are better than fresh peas. Sorry, because some peas are sweet, some aren't. You know, these are very, very consistent. And the type of pasta I'm gonna use are the shells. All right, are the shells. And what's nice about these is usually a pea goes into the shell. And that's why the kids <laughs> like to eat these. Okay, we start with the olive oil, very simple. Pasta cubazella. This was good once a week, once a week, uh, one of our once a week dishes. Okay, I've already chopped some carrots and I'm putting bacon in this. Now, pancetta, bacon, ends of prosciutto, the fat from the prosciutto. I don't know how many people have that around. Not many. Okay, some onion. And you want to put a lot of onion because that really gives it a great flavor. And I'm adding celery because. I just want to. All right, salt, pepper. I'm gonna give this a minute. We're gonna add the peas later. And I'm gonna add some shallots again, only because ever since we went to Croatia, everything had shallots in it. And uh, our shallots are so beautiful here, I've been using them. You know, one of the best things I had over there too was pickled shallots, and that was served to us, actually served with every meal, and shallots have such a high percentage of sugar in them that, uh, don't forget the garlic, that they get real sweet when they're pickled, and boy, does that go good with salamis or, uh, um, as an antipasto, very, very good. Okay, don't forget a little pinch of crushed red pepper. Okay, don't forget this parsley. Um, then I have some basil. Okay, this is gonna take a minute and we'll be right back, so don't go away. Once the bacon gets nice, a little crisp to it, add your peas. Then if you have any old tomatoes laying around, or you can add those, chop them up, or some canned tomatoes. And that's really for color. And these are some really interesting cherry tomatoes that, we, that came from Italy. And these are neat because uh, this is a big deal at the, in the fall in Italy. They leave these on the vine the longest, and they get they condense, and then they make sauces out of these. Very, very sweet. Okay, you see this boiling beautifully? We'll add, I'm guessing, half of the pound, half a pound of pasta. You don't want to make it too much pasta. Yep. So you add about a half a pound for our recipe. Yeah. Maybe in case company comes by, add a little bit more. And what I'm doing is going by my eye. Because this is going to swell up a bit, so. Yep, three quarters. The other secret would be to add it all. 
and add more water. What the heck? What am I going to do with a quarter pound of pasta? <laughs> huh? Okay, there you are. This is done. Next one's going to be pasta with broccoli. And look at the type of pasta. I mean, it's tried it. I've never tried this before in my life. Um, made by hand, Italy. Uh, I got this at uh, Monte Vista Market. Hey, why not? Give it a shot. I'm going to use it. Okay, broccoli. Okay, we're going to start with the basics. Onion. I'd like to use the shallot. And again, this is another one of those real quick meals. You have a glass of wine. It's raining outside. You got the fireplace going. Maybe you're going to watch a good movie. And you want to eat fast. And just kind of cuddle. And say, let's have a nice little dish of pasta con broccoli. Easy on the garlic. <laughs> All right, here we go. A little parsley. Oop. Got some basil. Add that. Some garlic. I'm going to turn that on high. I'm going to put the sausage in raw in chunks. Okay. I'm going to cut it just like this. That's okay. Again, we'll use a pound. You guys hungry? Yes, sir. All right, one pound. We got big boys here, all hungry. Jason's here too. Watch out. Let me introduce Jason to you, folks. Jason, come on out here. Jason and I have been working together now for, how long has it been, Jay? Two and a half years? About two and a half years. Okay. He's a personal trainer. Hi, Jay. I know, sir. And um, been doing a real good job, don't you think, folks? <laughs> well, we've been we've been working out together and biking and eating right, well, and intervals. doing intervals and yeah. I mean real serious stuff, huh? I'm an athlete. Yep. Definitely an athlete yep. now. Good. All right. Thanks, Jake. Jason Lucas, good guy, real pro. Okay, now we're going to do this and this and this. Now we're going to break the broccoli up in little pieces. Let's go. One more sausage. Again, my theme is one pot cooking. While you do this, the girlfriend can make the salad or vice versa. Let's add a little bit more onion. Good. Okay, this guy's on hot, so this is cooking. Now, when you come to this, don't throw this away, right? Look. Peel like this, like this, like this, like this. You see, this is very edible. Okay, you just want to take the skin off. Use the whole thing. Isn't it man packing? Aren't they making uh, coleslaw out of that? I mean, amazing. How versatile this is. Don't forget the hot pepper, folks. Okay, once that's done, you add the water. Just to cover it, we're going to add some tomatoes. If you've got any fresh tomatoes, soft ones laying around, now's the time to use them. Don't have to throw them away. Just, whoa. <laughs> A little bit of the juice. That was that at all. Okay. Don't use tomatoes in puree. Tomatoes in water. Or in juice, excuse me. Now. Okay, we got this. Now, one pot. I'm not going to make the pasta. It's all going to come in this pot. Okay. This needs maybe a good 15 minutes. Okay. Full blast. We'll be right back. So stay tuned. While this is cooking, because we've got to get that broccoli very, very, very soft, I'm going to show you another great depression 
era dish. Now, I'm sure, I don't know if most of the kids, <laughs> that's, it's got to be two generations away. I don't even know what the depression is. Uh, but it was tough times, they tell me, because I don't, I wasn't there. But my mom and dad would tell me. Okay, we got celery, we got shallots, we got some leek, carrots, and onions. This is another simple one. But this time I'm going to do something different. Now, what the type of meat that you would put in here can really vary. You can put the bacon, you could put uh, pancetta, which is an Italian bacon that isn't smoked. You can put um, Italian sausage. You can put ends of the prosciutto, but not everyone has a prosciutto where you can use the, the ends, you know. But you can do that too. And I said sausage, right? Or you could use um, an andouille, or you can use, this is linguisa, okay? This is real good linguisa. See the nice pieces of meat inside there? Now this linguisa came from the special order. Cassiera, smoked linguisa, home style, and these guys are up in uh, Tracy. And I understand Tracy's all full of Portuguese. I can call you guys Portuguese, right? Good. Absolutely. And they also got bacalao up there. Now that's a whole other story. Love that stuff. So this is the real stuff with the nice chunks of meat in it. This scrambled with eggs. Oh, great. Sandwiches. Fantastic. Or as I'm going to do here as a seasoning agent. We'll put that in now. Love those Portuguese. There was a great place in uh, Los Banos. And I used to go there and get wines and olive oils and bacalao, which is a dried codfish. And you know, that's what we eat. I love it, but nobody around here, few people, I think Sal, Sal, you like it? Sal likes it. Danny, you eat it? Never tried it. Never had it. Yeah, see, third generation. Oh, ho. Okay, don't forget salt and pepper. Don't forget a little hot pepper. Don't forget, we're going down to the nub on the parsley. Some parsley. We got some basil left. Let's use it up. Just throw it in there like that. Boy. Mmm. Mm. That smells good. Let's see how our our guy's doing here. Not quite. I want those broccoli. I want the broccoli to fall apart. Very important. Okay, here we go here. Now we want those vegetables to, uh, to soften up a bit. I want to put a tomato in here too. So you know, you, you have, you know, you buy a lot of tomatoes sometimes and they go, they start to go bad and you don't, I hate to throw them away. Um, you know, use them for this kind of stuff. Broccoli is very, very soft. This is ready to go. Carefully pour it in. This needs a, maybe a little bit more. Check this for salt, folks. See the broccoli. The broccoli is broken up pretty good. That's exactly what I want. Okay, check. Check for salt. Very important. Okay, bring this back up to a boil. Lentils are going to go in now. I'm using green. These are green lentils. Uh, usually you can use the other ones. You can use any kind. These are more expensive. The uh, yellow, yellows are less expensive. There's also a black lentil, by the way, that's very good. It's called caviar lentils. Okay. Okay, so this is up to a boil again. In we go. Jesus. I feel like I'm in Las Vegas. Okay. These are going to cook rather quickly, so we need another few minutes. We're ready. Let's dish this stuff up, folks. Whoa. Okay, the green lentils with sausage. Whoa, I tell you. Look at this. It's going to be good. I'll clean these up in a minute. Okay, now. 
pasta with broccoli, and Italian sausage. And this pasta is definitely strange. <laughs> yes, it is. I don't know. I don't know if I'd use that one again. Okay, pasta con peselli, pasta with sweet peas. Okay, then we'll do, now all of this needs, um, we need to finish this up a little bit like this. Okay, grated cheese for sure. Okay, and we're using the Romano. It's got a lot of flavor. See, the broccoli's almost dissolved. All right, so we got these two, one, Two, and do we want to put cheese on this? Heck yes. Let's put it on. It tastes delicious. And I tell you, use red wine with this, or red wine, or white wine. Depression day food, cooked for you today. Uh, all nutritious, very inexpensive. Um, hope you enjoy it, hope you try them out. Very, very good. This is okay, it's not bad, it's a different texture. See you next time.